Good afternoon everyone, my name is Sarah Kelly and I am the Marketing Director for a company called Partnerize. Partnerize is all about the power of partnership. We help brands partner together to drive new customer growth um, in a really exciting channel that drives up to a 20 to 1 ROI. I'm here today not to talk about that as exciting as it is, um, but to talk about something else that's really important to me and that I'm really passionate about and that's socialising. Sorry that's being social and really making the most out of LinkedIn specifically. I've been working across LinkedIn for the last eight years, um, helping both brands to really drive their presence um, and also to help individuals, helping people to make the most out of the platform, form the right connections um, and really position themselves as a thought leader. Um, there are many reasons that you use LinkedIn, um, but for me it's all about understanding your objectives and, and really personalizing your profile to suit. So today I just want to talk about five key things that in my opinion are the most important when it comes to driving a strong LinkedIn presence and, and really achieving those objectives. So the first one is your profile picture. Um, we all say that we you know, shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but when it comes to LinkedIn, your profile picture is often the first thing that you see. Um, and we do, we do certainly notice it above anything else when we're looking at others' profiles. So it is, for me, probably the most important element purely just on that first impressions aspect. There are a few things that you can do to really make your profile picture pop. Uh, so we've got my, I guess, little three key pieces of advice. Firstly, it's keep it up to date. Uh, we all know someone whose profile picture is from about 15 years ago. Um, especially as that was the 90s, they can be very questionable sometimes. Um, so personally, I like to keep it up to date within two years. Second thing is just be professional. Um, make sure that your LinkedIn really is something that represents you. As much as I love a selfie, it's not the best way to take your profile picture. Um, but saying that, the third thing for me is just keeping it suitable to your own brand. Um, I personally work for a tech company. Uh, you know, we're all about being cool and, and forward thinking and innovative. And so if my profile picture is me in, um, although I do love them, a power suit, it's not really matching my own personal brand. Um, so it's quite important to match what you're really trying to say in, in your picture. Uh, the second thing is your headline. Um, obviously, slightly different example here, but um, your headline is really important. And again, this really ties back to the objectives that you're trying to achieve. So there's a few things really and that I, that I think are the most important, and that's be clear, be concise, and, and be correct. Personally, I think with your headline, there's two avenues that you go down. Firstly, if, and we've all done this, if you are out there on LinkedIn looking for another job, it's really important that you have your title or, or your skills that are really gonna attract a recruiter who might be going through and, and looking for somebody like you. Um, and the second thing for me is if you are trying to position yourself as a thought leader. So that's a great way to add in keywords um, and things that relate to your attributes and strengths and things that you're really, really wanting to push in that personal message to market. Um, so as I said, it's just being clear and making sure it aligns with your objectives being concise, um, nobody wants a headline that goes on for two paragraphs, um, and just, just being correct, just be you and be as authentic as you could possibly be. The third thing is your summary. Um, if you can't tell so far, I am a lover of images and memes, um, and those do continue through the presentation, so my apologies in advance. Um, but your LinkedIn summary, this is really, it's sort of a tough one, because obviously when you go to LinkedIn, you only really see the first four lines of somebody's summary and you always have to click down and see more. Now, if someone's genuinely interested in connecting with you, they're gonna click down, they're gonna read more. So it is important to obviously focus on initially what they can see in those top four, but then to really make sure that the whole thing, if they do choose to click through, makes sense. Um, so I think here, the key things for me are, just really reinforcing your purpose. You know, it comes back again to those objectives. What are you trying to achieve? Um, is it a looking for a new job? Is it to make new connections? Is it to be a thought leader in your space? So make sure that your purpose is really in that summary. Um, 
don't be afraid here to showcase your own knowledge. Um, you know, nobody likes to show off, but LinkedIn is there to really show who you are in a professional sense. Um, don't be afraid to highlight the things that you're good at, the achievements that you've driven and, and why you're different. Um, if you think about it, when you send a CV, you know, if everybody sent the same one and the same thing, no one's going to stand out and, and LinkedIn summaries are exactly the same. The last thing as well, and I guess it ties back into that point is, you know, really show examples of how you drive success. We've all seen profiles where people have talked about, you know, oh, I, I do all these great things and I'm, and I'm so amazing, but nothing that ever backs it up. Um, if you've got results behind you and they don't have to be metric driven, absolutely share those as well. It's really important to just kind of show that you're not only a person who says it, you do it at the same time. You walk the talk for everyone who loves that lovely expression. Um, fourth thing is your experiences and your achievements. So this falls really if in terms of a category, it falls into your job history, your employment history. Um, it's quite a big section. Some people choose to have every job that they've ever had. Um, I personally have a colleague who used to have his job at Gloria Jean's Cafe on his LinkedIn profile, um, which we all enjoyed. Um, but you know, stuff like that, not as relevant as it needs to be. Um, but it is, it is an area where you're very much walking the talk. It's you showing exactly what you've done, the types of roles that you've come from and, and the types of things that you've, you've really been successful in. Now it's up to you into how much detail that you wanna go. Um, personally, I like to keep mine relatively concise. Um, you know, obviously if I'm starting to talk to, let's, let's say it's for recruitment purposes. If I'm starting to talk to somebody, um, then I can go into more detail and I often have it on my CV. In terms of thought leadership, you know, if you've got a strong headline and a strong summary, I feel if you go into too much detail under your job, you're gonna lose people. We all have very limited attention spans at best. Um, so I think it's best to be as concise as you can while still delivering a really powerful message. So again, just understanding your objectives. I know I've said this through all of today's presentation, but it really is the most important thing. There's no point going out with a message if you don't understand what you want to achieve. So if you really want to show, for example, um, a particular area that you're really strong in, pop some examples in there, talk about the responsibilities you had in that area, talk about ways that you drove success previously um, in that category. Really sort of, I guess, back yourself. Um, the second one is writing in the eyes of your audience. So um, I know obviously I've talked quite a lot today about if you're looking for a new job, um, but this is just as much for people who really want to emphasize that they're a thought leader in this space. So if you think about the types of people that you'd be trying to connect with, whether that's peers in, in other businesses or whether that's industry experts or whoever it might be, it's really important for you to write as if they're reading it. So think about when you've gone to someone else's profile, um, let's say that you know they've gone through basically their entire job history um, from the day they left university and, and everything's great. And they've got you know all these great results, but nothing's really sparking you, nothing's talking to you, nothing's making you think that they're a key leader and someone that you need to go to. So think about what's the most important thing, whether that's talking about specific brands that you've worked with, or whether that's talking about projects that you've done that have really kind of driven your own personal brand, or even whether that's you proving yourself by talking about LinkedIn on your own LinkedIn profile. Um, it's, really, it's really good to just emphasize those um, and just be aware. And lastly, it's just be relevant. Um, you know, it's just about being concise again, as I said before, um, with your summary. It's, you know, understanding what's the most important thing and, and prioritizing what's important rather than having six bullet points of everything you've done in every role, have three. Pick the three that are the most relevant and go from there. Last but not least are your recommendations. Um, personally, this is a little bit of a hard one because in my experience, people find it really difficult. Sorry, I hope you're all enjoying this excellent meme that I did find. Um, but most people do find it really difficult to ask for those recommendations. Um, 
personally, I I usually find it best when it's reciprocal. Um, but then again, someone has to go first. Um, and it's not always an easy thing to do. So I think with your recommendations, my absolute first point is don't be afraid to ask. People will, will surprise you. Um, remember that when you ask for recommendations, you know, you're not, you're not going to your boss and being like, oh, can you give me a LinkedIn recommendation because I'm going to go look for another job. That would be lovely. You know, it's, it's about, again, your personal brand and, and really emphasizing what's important to you. You don't just have to ask your boss either, which comes to my second point. Think outside of the box. If you work in a customer facing role, obviously you can ask managers, but you can ask peers, you can ask customers that you work with. Um, myself personally, because I work in marketing, I work with a lot of tech vendors and a lot of agencies. Um, I've gone out before and asked them for references on um, projects we've done. I've asked them to give me a recommendation when they've run an event um, and, oh sorry, when I've run an event um, and they've been a part of that. So it's really important to think outside of the standard square. Remember that again, this isn't your CV. Um, when it comes to looking for a job, you can have as many excellent references as you like, but LinkedIn rec recommendations should really be a bit more personal and, and a bit more relevant to that brand message that you're trying to push. Um, and lastly, it's reciprocate. As I said in the first point, it's, it's sometimes scary to ask other people for recommendations. Um, so if they do ask you, or if they write one for you, please do go back, always say yes, um, unless they're terrible, then I'll let you deal with that one. But, um, you know, always, always be encouraging. And, and if you've asked someone and, and they've said yes, come back and, and offer them one in return. It, it really does make a difference. And it's just a nice gesture. Look, to sum up, um, I know, as I said, I've mentioned this about 400 times now through this presentation, but it really is about the objectives. They're more important over everything else make sure that you really you know set those at the beginning understand what your priorities are and and those might change as well you know as i said you might start off where you're using linkedin purely to find a new role but then once you're in that role your priorities can change to become being that thought leader being seen as that go-to person both internally and externally um and always relaying everything you do and changes on your profile back to those goals and objectives will really allow you to show how amazing you are in a relevant um, and interesting way. Um, that is everything from me today. I will open up the floor to questions.